Okay. Okay, so here we're looking at the size comparison between the D20 on the left and the D400 with the D20 emulator and the HDLC converter on the right. As you can see, they're both the same physical size. So in a retrofit installation, we would remove the D20 chassis and we would fit the D400 and the HDLC converter into the same spot. And then if we look at the back, we can see the connections. So on the back we have all the serial ports for the D400, the Ethernet ports, and on the back of the HDLC converter we have two T.20 links and an Ethernet connection. So as far as physical connection goes, you hook up power, we replace the serial ports onto the first seven serial ports on the D400. We move the HDLC cables from the D20 to the two HDLC ports on the converter. And then we connect the converter to the D400 using an Ethernet cable between this port here and one of the Ethernet ports on the D400. And that is it as far as physical installation goes. It's that simple. Okay, now we're going to take a look at how you transfer the uh, information out of the D20 into a D400. So that will include the firmware, the boot ROM, and the configuration. So for this setup, what we have is we have a Westmain cable plugged from our PC uh, serial port to the D20. And we have the PC also connected using an Ethernet cable to the D400. And we start up the D20 emulator configuration tool. And we simply go to the project file and we select transfer D20 to D400. And then what we can do is we can save, uh, we can type in the name of a, of a file just to save our configuration. Save and we get a configuration wizard that guides us through the process. So what we do on the D400 settings is, is put in the IP address of the D400. The D400 uh, Telnet password. And we punch in the MAC address of the Ethernet, the Ethernet HDLC converter. And that MAC address is, is on a label on the back of each module that ships. So you just copy it down off of that. And over on the D20 side, we have the D20 uh, username and login in this case Westronic RD, and then we just hit um, OK. This brings us to a screen that we can just accept the defaults for, but this is the COM port mapping. So this just shows us that Westmate will be on port 1 on the D400, and then COM 1 to 7 will be on ports 2 to 8. And so if we care to change these, we can. Um, normally you could just leave these at the default, so I'm just going to leave them. Then there are a couple of quick settings on the um, on the D400 side, which we will probably be hiding in the future. But they just have to do with uh, whether you want the database sync enabled between the D20 and the D400 databases, and then a few timing parameters. Now you just select your D20 board type uh, and whether you want the time sync. This time sync parameter. Um, specifies whether or not the D20 emulator or the D400 software controls the time of the unit. And this is just because you may have DNP protocol or you may have uh, protocols running on the D20 that are sending at time syncs, but you may prefer to have the D400 time syncing to a network clock or to a protocol on that. So this just allows you to select which side has say over or control over the system clock. So we just hit OK to that and it asks us if you want to upload the boot ROM firmware and, and configuration from the D20. We just hit yes and we'll see the, the uh, status window comes up and it is currently trying to connect to Westmain on the D20. It'll ask us what baud rate we'd like to use. In our case we're going to use 115.2. Okay, so this goes into West Main and increases the baud rate there to 115.2. And then we start uploading the files.
So this process at 115.2 depends on the on your memory model can take a little bit of time because it's over serial port. In this case, it'll take us uh, roughly half an hour. So we'll take a look at what happens a uh, half hour from now. Okay, so now we've finished the upload of the files from the D20. So now just to download it, we select project, download to D400, uh, just ask us if we're sure. So we click yes, and we'll see. Uh, there we go, we see the, uh, the file being downloaded. In the meantime, what we've done is opened up a terminal window here that's connected using a serial port to Westmate on the D400. And so when we get all the files in, we should see the, D, the uh, D20 emulator restart and, and see the familiar startup messages. See the D20 starting. Go to that window. We can log in. And all we have is exactly what was inside the D20 when we started, except now it is running inside the D400. And the points are available to the D400 database and everything already. So that's how simple it is to transfer your files from one to the other. Uh, while we're looking at it, let's just take a look real quickly at uh, another way that we can do this. If supposing that we already have our firmware and boot ROM files, we can also upload, rather than transferring everything, we can choose an upload from the D20 where we just select only the configuration file or any combination. And if we hit OK, then it will upload from the D20. But rather than update, uploading all of the files, it will only upload the selected files. So this is a great way to get a configuration out of a machine that you're not quite sure what is in there. Um, you can still pull it out and push it across. The emulator doesn't care. If you know what it is, it will just run exactly whatever that uh, configuration was. Okay. Okay, we're just going to show a little comparison of the Westmate speed update compared to uh, from serial versus Ethernet. So on the left, we have this PC connected to um, a serial port, so basically connected to a, the equivalent of the Westmate port. They're both connected into the D400. This PC is connected using a serial port, the traditional way you would connect to a D400. The one on the right is connected through the D400 HMI into the Westmate link, that way via Ethernet. And we're just going to do a little um, going around through some of the menus and you can see the, the marked difference in, in update speed to the user. So if I go into system data, for an example, and go into the digital input displays, you can see that we're waiting for the one on the left to catch up to the, to the version on the right. And if we page down, we get updates immediately here, whereas we're watching. And so you'll see all through the Westmain interface that the user responsiveness from the emulator version of Westmain is a lot faster. Um, with the version that's coming through Ethernet than the version that's connected up through a serial port. So this is just a, a nicer, faster way to look at the old uh, D20 interface that people are used to. Okay, so what we're going to do is a, a little demonstration of how quickly the updates come in to Westmain running on the D20 enabler. So what we have here is a C board and three S boards all connected in through the uh, D.20 link 
and we have all of the status points, all 64 points on each of the three status boards, all wired into one control switch here. So first we'll take a look at the SOE buffer. And you can see that the SOE buffer is empty. So we'll just go back to the digital input display. And the first status board starts at point 17. I'm just going to click the switch on and you can see how quickly the points all update. So here we go, three, two, one, and we see all of the updates, and then we'll switch them back off again, three, two, one, and they're off. So that's how quick it updates. If we go back to the SOE log, take another look. We'll see if we just run right to the end. We've got our all 380, oh, what is it, 384 <laughs> points on off, and we have three calculator points that are that are uh, triggered off of one status point on each board, which is what the extra points are. So as you can see, it's very, very responsive, very quick updates for status inputs coming in from, from the D.20 link.